So, before we take this as a form of bullying, this, just know that this doesn't even, even always account over the physical appearance, but the presentation of the wrestlers that I talk about. So don't put this over as a form of cyberbullying whenever I appoint anybody's appearance. But wrestlers, uh, wrestlers' looks do matter. Sticking out does matter. Looking presentable does matter. When Vince goes up and tries to make fun of you after you come out of holiday, even though you work it over on a weekly show where you're supposed to be in good shape most of the time, does matter. You are presenting an image, you're presenting a character, and yes, that always means staying over on tip-top shape. Unless it's not dependent on the character. More, staying over morbidly a beast all because you can do the same wrestling moves doesn't mean that it's healthy. <laughs> ask Goku Zuda, ask Andre the Giant, ask Kevin Owens, ask Viscera, ask a bunch of workers that's been with the business that stayed over on poor health. And then die like before they even turn 50. It is not a healthy lifestyle, and I understand wrestling is already painful as it is, but over in, like, majority of the workers you see today, uh, they are either fat, skinny fat, have a fade, kick pads with wrist tape, bland trunks with a, possibly a ponytail or a beard. And I'm not asking them to get in Lex Luger type shape, but at least presentable shape. Like Austin Theory, the pedo stash is something, but the porno stash is something. Uh, the Mario stash is something. It ain't it, but at least it's something. He has a decent figure, looks presentable, looks like he can talk, looks like I can advertise him. You see somebody like Jay White and you think he possibly touched somebody. And since 2020, that's kind of been the allegations that's been going on with professional wrestlers lately. Because they don't look like professional wrestlers. They look like wannabes. They look like backyarders. Majority of over the wrestling generation has been a bunch of backyarders over the indie promotion that's been half-assed physique, decent work rate, where they're able to do a lot of athleticism, overly reliant without even trying to build up much of a physical presentation. And that's why majority of them don't draw. It's not because they don't think that they're good workers or they have WWE style production. It's just because they don't they're not they're not, you know, attracting much eyes to the product. Like you don't just show a bunch of women, none of them can be in magazines and you think that nobody's gonna watch it because nobody wants to see somebody unattractive. And that's a pure fact. Like, Kenny Omega at least looks like he works out. You look at the Young Bucks, and you don't want them around your children or your or your girls. Not because you think you're going to steal them. I mean, probably the children, but not the women. Like, just look at this, bro. Who in the hell says they ever want to look like or be Kevin Owens? Like, a fat dude wearing a... Sleeveless shirt with some boxers and some wrestling boots, dog. <laughs> or Johnny Gargano, that is where that's with a basic short haircut, with trunks and kick pads and knee pads. It, nobody's efficiently trying to stand out anymore. The most that we had over that was Velveteen Dream, that at least inspired himself over a uh, uh, a golden age wrestlers with his own semblance of flamboyancy had decent presentation, you know, shows himself outside of the group. Like, that's a professional wrestler. That's a guy that stands out over the top and has his own has his own thing. Most of the guys have the same aura, don't try to change stuff up, have the same presentation, and don't look like they can get over at least upper to mid-card level. Like, so, like somebody like Kevin O, like uh, Cody Rhodes. A lot of range, good talker, can have not a bad match or any, can have a good match with nearly anybody that puts away from him and looks presentable but not good enough to like, I already know 
if uh, I don't know if you're going to be a main eventer or not, unless it's a different situation. Like, I'm not asking for anybody to be like Bobby Lashley or Brock Lesnar, but at least some of the wrestlers got to look presentable. Uh, like Damian Priest, for example, he has a good frame. He sounds intimidating, but he looks like an Arkham City Asylum uh, character that touched somebody in the showers when they dropped the soap. And Dominic Mysterio just never looks like he touches the weight room, even though he works every week. Finn Balor looks weird, like a rejected Abercrombie and Fitch model. Like, you're seeing women that look more masculine than some of the men in pro wrestling nowadays, like Jade Cargill or Rhea Ripley. That are, that are, and they're just... I don't know if I, I'm, like, uh, you know, tolerant of this type of shit, and that's why I don't even watch that much wrestling. Because most of the male wrestlers don't even look that appealing to feel like, oh, bro, this guy looks like he can kick some ass. All I know is they're gonna slap their thigh, work 30 minutes... Don't look that cool. And then they're going to go off and do the same thing. And then they're going to ask why they're being underlooked. Because you don't look cool, bro. You don't look advertisable. Nobody wants just a, a, a Daniel Bryan. Not everybody wants to act like a Daniel Bryan every damn week. And think like that's going to get them over. You got to go to the gym. You got to give some oomph to your essence. You got to give some look to you. And yes, sometimes that means putting you some work into the gym to look presentable. And you can even use roids. It stiffens the muf muscle and gets out some testosterone out. And some male pro wrestlers need that. And, and, and you see, in like, just check out the NXT roster or the AEW roster, if you know what I mean. Like... <laughs> You guys are just guys, you're seeing guys with buzz cut fades. Most of these guys look anorexic. Wear kick pads or thigh pads. Barely have that much of a pectoral muscle. And they look like I can, uh, they look like a YouTuber can beat them. They all look like Joe Schmo, weirdo, D bags, jobbers. And I don't want to own them as action figures, and children don't pick up the action figures. They're still asking if there's a still John Cena, Triple H, Rey Mysterio, somebody that looks like they have a presentation to them, or at least looks cool. And, and they can be honest with me. Like, oh, I want... Are you sure you don't want Sami Zayn over... No, I want Roman Reigns. I want the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. group. Honestly, it, it just makes sense. And, and I'm not saying, like, these guys aren't talented. That's not denouncing their talent, but the reason why some of these guys don't get over is because they never look presentable enough to advertise, and that's why WWE always has an issue trying to actually in initialize big st uh, stars off the talent roster, because WWE can make stars. WWE will make stars. They just could struggle because most of these guys either don't look like it and that's a pure fact look at guys like Keith Lee fat piece of shit Kevin Owens had an impactful debut but are you sure he's gonna get pushed over from upper mid card cuz he's still fat Braun Strowman looked a bit chunky now he's shredded big show had issues with weight for majority of his career until you saw him with like a six pack of 2017, and now he looks more recognizable. Gunter, even Gunter, big New Year's German baby himself, took took it upon himself to actually lose a bit of weight. He still looks tall, imposing, and still looks like he can kick ass. And now what? He's the Intercontinental Champion. For pro wrestlers, work on yourself. It, this is not an athletic spectacle. It is a performance. And this is coming from a fan, and I suggest you actually listen to the fan for once if you actually want to get connected with some of the fans. Look presentable. Look cool. You don't see Rick Grimes coming over from a regular cop to adapting to his... uh. 
to adapting to his surroundings and being the badass leader he is, bro. And he looks cooler. Like, Austin Theory tries to look cooler anytime he comes back. It's just a pure fact. Look cooler. Get yourself over to the gym. And, or work on your presentation. Because having a fade with a pedo stash, wearing some kick pads, while looking anorexic, I don't, I don't like that being, I don't like that being the build of wrestlers. I don't mind a lean, athletic build for professional wrestlers. Shawn Michaels had a lean, athletic build. And he was one of the top stars in the '90s, so there is no excuse. I'm not asking you to be Hulk Hogan. No one's asking you to be Alex Hammerstone. Uh, and NJ Nunjoko, I don't know that guy from MLW. J just try to look presentable, and anybody would be booking you. No one's asking you to be like Wardlow, bro. I just see this a lot with a low standard of body types in in professional wrestling now, and that's weak, bro. Because I gotta see this in stores where children are buying buying you off the shelves, and people complain why WWE has an issue trying to find a new top guy to book. Because Kevin Owens, because uh, Sami Zayn doesn't look presentable to be the world champion. Kevin Owens doesn't look presentable to be the world champion. Cesaro doesn't look that much presentable to be world champion. Baron Corbin has bitch tits with his stomach having a higher, having a bigger smile than him to be world champion. Bronson Reed looks like he's better off if he had gloves and put his hair into a man bun. He could make me a mean ass burger. Damien Priest looks like he touched somebody. Finn Balor looks weird. Johnny Gargano looks weird. And most of these guys are possibly going to get pushed anyway. And then they have an issue that they get overlooked for Orton to get, what, a 15th world title run. Because you know guys don't look the part, bro. It's just a fact of life. So, uh... Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just saying. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe.